In this video, I'll show you how to build and deploy a demand forecasting solution with BigQuery ML. My name is Paul Lin, and I'm a developer advocate for Google Cloud. Demand forecasting can apply to many different use cases. For example, predicting ticket sales in the transportation industry, to media on the gaming or telecommunications when you want to predict whether you might need to allocate more resources in order to meet demand. And of course, for retail businesses, there's a Goldilocks problem when it comes to inventory. Don't stock too little, because this could mean a loss of potential revenue, but don't stock too much, because that could be costly too, with a surplus of goods, taking up precious space, with a limited lifespan. So with potentially millions of products, for a data science and engineering team to create multi-millions of forecasts is one thing, but to also procure and manage the infrastructure to handle an end-to-end -end model training and forecasting solution, this can quickly become overwhelming, especially for large businesses. With BigQuery ML, without needing to move your data out of BigQuery, you can train and deploy machine learning models directly using SQL. That means you get your data storage, data analytics, and machine learning all built into BigQuery. So in this video, we'll cover how to prepare the training data in BigQuery, train and evaluate a time series model with BigQuery ML, visualize the forecasts in a dashboard, and then schedule and automate model retraining. Let's start with the training data. We can use this public data set available on BigQuery on liquor sales to forecast demand. This data set contains transactional information on when liquor products like whiskey, rye, rum, and other kinds of liquor are sold in the state of Iowa in the United States, and how many bottles were sold in that particular transaction. So we can forecast the total demand for each of these products over time across all the stores. The first step is to prepare the data in the right shape so we can use this as the training data for the time series model. So here I've selected three columns, the date, the item name, and the sum or the total of the amount of each product that was sold for that date across all transactions. And here I'm selecting a year and a half's worth of data between 2016 and 2017. You may also notice in the data that there's actually some dates missing. And that's okay because BigQuery ML will impute any values for those missing dates for you automatically using local linear interpolation. The links to all the SQL code used in this video and other reference patterns are in the video description below. If you were to plot this, you can see the daily historical demand over time. For example, with these two products, Black Velvet, which is a Canadian whiskey, and Captain Morgan Spiced Rum, which is a blend of Caribbean rums and some spices. So our goal here would be to try to create a time series model to forecast future demand for the next 30 days. Now let's look at creating the time series model in SQL with BigQuery ML. To form our query to train the time series model with BigQuery ML, we first need to select the data, which I've put in a training data table. Next, we want to create or replace model, followed by the dataset dot model name, which in this case, I've decided to call this model forecast by product. Next, we need to specify the model type, which is the ARIMA based model and then specify the three columns in our data. The timestamp column, which is our date, the data column, which is the total amount of the product sold, and the ID column, which is the item name. Just as a note, this ID column allows us to train multiple time series models in the single query, one for every item name in our data. So we don't have to write a separate query to train a separate model for each of these products. Another thing to note is, you can also set the holiday region so that the model can account for potential holiday effects. For example, global or regions like NA for North America or country codes like US for United States. You can find the full list of regions in the create model documentation for BigQuery ML. And just note that to take advantage of holiday effects, your data must have at least one year's worth of daily data. So with this one create model query, as you run this, for each item, BigQuery ML will try to find the best time series model by first creating up to 42 candidate models. And amongst those candidate models, it automatically selects the best model for you using AutoArima. And that's all within a single query. 
And if you want to know more about what happens behind the scenes when building a time series model in BigQuery ML, stay tuned till the end of the video when I cover all the various bells and whistles. Next, let's look at model evaluation. So once the model is created, you can see it shows up in my Iowa Liquor dataset here as forecast by product, which is the name of my model. And I can click on the model and navigate to the evaluation tab where I can see the metrics for the models. So with five items, we have five rows or five models. And for each of these items, the corresponding model is the best model that was selected by BigQuery ML based on auto Arima, which I mentioned earlier. So we have the P, D, Q, and whether or not these models have drift, the log likelihood, the AIC, variance, and seasonality. And for seasonal periods, this can be any combination of daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly, or no seasonality. And in these cases with these items, only weekly seasonality was detected by BigQuery ML. And in SQL, it's select star from ml.evaluate, model, and then your model name. Next is using the model to make your predictions on future dates. You can make your forecasts using ml.forecast. And I'll show you the SQL query in a bit. Uh, and ml.forecast will give you future timestamps, the forecasted value, and its standard error, the confidence level, which I've set to 0 0.90 here, and the upper and lower prediction interval bounds. So by adding this to the historical data, you can plot this on a graph and compare between the forecasted values and the actual values if you have them. You can see for the most part, the actual values fell within the 90% confidence interval. To use the model to make your forecasts in SQL, you can use select star from ml.forecast, the model name, and then pass in two important values, the horizon, which is the number of time points to predict in the future, up to a maximum of 1,000 data points. And in this case, given daily data, we want to use a value of 30 for one month uh, worth of forecast values. And the confidence level, which is the percentage of the future values that fall in the prediction interval. Just to make the confidence level a little easier to understand, here are three forecasts at three different confidence intervals for the same model. At 0.8 or 80%, your confidence intervals are tighter or closer to the forecasted values. So that buffer is narrower. At 0.99 or 99% confidence interval, they're much looser, so you can really be confident that whatever the actual value will be will likely fall within this confidence interval. Note that regardless of the confidence interval level that you choose, uh, the forecasted values will remain the same. So how you choose your confidence interval is entirely up to you and your use case. Uh, do you want to be very, very certain that the actual demand will fall within your predicted ranges? Then maybe opt for a higher confidence interval or if you want to really have a slightly narrower predicted ranges to help you better optimize your products or resources, then maybe opt for something lower like 0 0.80. Now you may want to visualize your forecasts in some sort of interactive dashboard that you can share with others, for example, with Data Studio. Regardless of the visualization tool, you may want to consider preparing the data for visualization by combining your historical data with the forecasted values and intervals into the same table or view so it's easier to use with your dashboard. To do so, you can use union all between your historical data that you select and your forecasted values and prediction intervals. Just noting that you'll need to create null values for forecasted data when selecting your historical data and null values for historical values when selecting your ml.forecast data as well. That way you're using union all with the same schema. Here is an example of a dashboard that I created using Data Studio, where it's interactive and I can see the forecasted values and the intervals. And I can also drill down into the individual time series for each of the uh, products. So effectively, this dashboard can now be used to predict future sales so that you can prepare and optimize your stock and or price levels. If you're like many businesses that need to create fresh time series forecasts based on the most recent data, you can use scheduled queries to automatically rerun your SQL queries, which can include your create model, ml.evaluate, or ml forecast queries as examples. You can set how often you want to rerun them if you want to start them on a certain day and end on a certain day, and even send out email notifications when they're done, 
or send a PubSub message to trigger something downstream as well. To create a scheduled query, you can simply click on Schedule and Create New Scheduled Query. And once you've created the scheduled query job, it'll show up in your scheduled queries page. Now, at this time, I want to shed some light on what's happening behind the scenes when you train a time series model in BigQuery ML. When you train a time series model with BigQuery ML, multiple components are used in the model creation pipeline, with ARIMA being one of the core algorithms, but there are other components used as well. So here they are roughly listed in the order that they are run. So the first step is pre-processing. And this means uh, automatic cleaning of any issues with your input time series. So this can include missing values, which are imputed. Uh, this could include uh, deduplication of timestamps. Uh, and if you have any spike anomalies or any kind of abrupt changes uh, in your time series data, then it's identified at this stage. The next stage is dealing with holiday effects. Holiday effects are disabled by default, and when they are disabled, any kinds of spikes or dips that may occur due to holidays become treated as anomalies, which may not be ideal if you want the model to treat these days as kind of holiday behavior. So to enable holiday effects, set the holiday region you want in your create model code, and make sure you have the prerequisite of at least one year's worth of daily data. Next. BigQuery ML will try to extract or detect the seasonality and trend in the time series data. And in the final stage, BigQuery ML uses the ARIMA model and the auto ARIMA algorithm for hyperparameter tuning. Up to 42 candidate models are trained and evaluated in parallel, and you get the best model based on the lowest AIC score. So now you should know how to build and deploy a demand forecasting solution with BigQuery ML. Thanks for watching.